Well, hello tubers. Stone Age Tools. That's what we have here. Because if you love artifacts, you have to love more than just the, the points. But you gotta love the tools as well. And it really begins with loving those who came before us. Those who their daily life depended on the Stone Age tools. Now to me, they've always been tools. Whether they're a knife or a projectile point. But most people associate normal tools with all the other things you see here before us. And I would have liked to have done this in a little brighter of a spot. Hopefully this does okay filming. Which a good portion of these came out of cases and out of our china cabinet. But a good portion of these tools always stay right here in this corner. So, without ado, I'm going to try not to take any more longer and we will start with one of our favorite tools which we find a lot of here in Missouri the old ads see that bit in there that defines the ads pretty much this one's uniface which Y'all just saw me find this one in the creek. And a lot of ours has that flat tip at the end. But not all of them are made that way. Just a good majority of them. This one's made out of like a sugar quartz. It's been smoothed over by the creek for a while. But we got some of our other best ads out of the case. Like this one here. This is think one of my first creek ads right here it has some great flaking on it really cool pocket has an obtruse tip not a flat tip like some of them do here's another favorite ads from the case this thing has some great color in it some great workmanship as well and even though it's little and thin it still has that adds bit into it we had to do this again because the first one wasn't showing a lot it wasn't getting macroed in just right as we seem to be doing now this is made from one of my favorite materials snakeskin stipple I like to call it and actually bevel blade oops gave it that name Here's another favorite ads. This one has a double, a dual bullseye on it. See, I don't know why it's not wanting to focus in. It was on the other ones. goes lots of high polish on this one both ends here's another favorite ads some of these are 
from the big C. Some of these are from the dirty hole. This one's basically uniface through the middle but has some edge working there. Not so much on that side as this side does. And a little flat tip. See, here's one of my favorite, probably the thinnest ads I have. And it's really, really thin. And it even has some secondary edge work down it. Which I forgot to mention, a lot of our ads are heavily ground on their edges. This one here is just as smooth as glass on this edge. Same with some of these other ones. Here's another favorite edge from the Big C. This one has some serious polish on it. That sun's coming through just right. Has a little stack on this side, but just gives it character. And this is the only one we've ever found like this. It's a double bitted edge. A lot of people would call us a square knife, but from where it came from and the culture that it came out of. The Smetleyville culture, Sedalia, Smiths, Melvilles, and Etleys. We're pretty sure it's just a double bit of ads. And then those of you who've been watching me for a long time, where I remember me finding this up at Mackey's Drive-In, and he had me to come up there and dig a few years back. And this is probably our biggest ads. I think it's over five inches, if I remember right. And if it wasn't for that strong bitted end right there, like it, I'd almost call us a flint cell. But I believe it's just the ads. Then we have some of your basic scrapers ones like this one here this one here is from the dirty hole here's one that's from the creek got some really cool banded material in it and they have this really cool Rose Quartz one. Here from our brother Jonesy. Which it was Indian Trace who inspired us to do this tool video. And a few other in house videos I would like to do. But brother Jonesy, we had watched his tool vid and he called it the Cool Tool Challenge. And I've seen only one other person post their tools so far. So I thought I would share mine. Some of my favorite tools. Here's a really cool one from Tennessee. From Billy the Tian Relic Hunter. And this thing has great big flakes all the way around it. But on this edge, from here to over here, has some really fine secondary edge work on it. And that's the only spot that's like that on this whole blade. So you know, that was their using end for whatever they were using it for. Scraping hides. Some, anything to do with woodwork, whether it be their wigwams, their homes, as what we believe 
a lot of the ads were used for, used for woodwork. And then here we get some of our Missouri turtleback scrapers. A lot of them are uniface on the bottom side. This one's not wanting to focus in with macro. Sorry about that. There it goes. Then, there's just a really cool tool. If you can see all that edge work on this thing on both sides. I'm not sure if that's damage. I don't really think so because when most things break, they don't break like that. But I don't know why they had left that little sharp nipple right there on it. That may have been a multi purpose tool. We never know. Then we have some flake knives down here. This one here is from the little C. Check out the edge work on that thing. It just comes and down this edge and down there. The rest of it's all plain. Big old uniface. Which a lot of your flight knives are uniface. This one here is from the creek. As you can tell with the brown orangish patina start to appear on it. That has one heck of a worked edge down that side. And just made from a great big overshot flake. Here's one of our favorite flake knives. Always reminds me of a butter knife. <laughs> Now this thing here, they have minute flaking all the way down the edge of this. But at this end here, if you can tell, they used it so much, they wore about a sixteenth of an inch away from it right there. But then it's flaked all the way around this edge on both sides. And it has that big wave in it. And then here is another flake knife. This came from the first shelter I ever dug in. And if I have anything paleo, this is probably it right here. Because on film, you can barely even see the edge work on here. And where I've read several times that most paleo flake knives to be considered paleo has to have 43 or 46 nicks per inch well this one has that if not more I've tried counting them and there's so many you just lose count with inside that inch really neat material too and then here we have some of our favorite thumb scrapers. Come on, Macro, work with me here. It's got that divot in the center of it. But then its edges are worked all the way around. Made out of our red, pink, purple mosaic at. Here's another flake or thumb scraper. This one's from the Little C. And this one's really cool. Just because it's, it's the biggest one I've ever seen. 
but it has all this outer core left on it. Big old center knocked out of it. And just that edge worked away. And I really like this one because it has our, well, I call it rust patina on there, but it's really from the iron ore we have in the ground around here so much. Here's a cool little tool. I don't even know what to call it. They call it a dirty hole piece. <laughs> that's what they call it, because that's where it's from. Big preform it's laying on top of there. Now here's a cool little tool. See how finally the base has worked on this little guy here. Then the rest of it's all uniface. And just a couple big flakes and I got a great big sharp little hafted scraper of some kind. Then we have some other really cool tools here. Here's a great hammer stone from our eastern North Carolina buddy, Indian Trace, made out of quartz. Great hammer stone, which we have a couple other little hammer stones here. And hopefully you can see the bowl in this. This is a mortar bowl from California from our buddy Wagon John. And then back here, mm, a California pedestal, which we have a broken one laying right there. It's broken half. Great tool. Just a great tool. Then, oh, here's a big grinder. Also, from Indian Trace. And if you don't subscribe to him, you should. Because he's one of like the many on here. It's always attracted me to certain YouTubers that I call that have the appreciation factor. They appreciate what they find. They appreciate everything. And they really appreciate those who made these tools and these finds left behind. For us to find. Now this is probably. Even Pedestal Man one time. Said this was probably a, a museum quality. Mano. Which is just another. Name. For a grinding stone. And that goes with. With your course. Your Matates. Which this is my only one. Really. From the big C. See, we have this little adz that always hides out in here. And there's a really cool blade. Make sure if it's a super nice adz, because it does have that little bit of bit end. A little flat spot right there. That's some great working on it, though. Just a great piece all together. Just a great piece. Oh, and then we have some bone awls. This bone awl here, made from a deer knuckle joint. By a leg bone. Came from one of the second shelters we ever dug in. Always make sure you get permission to dig anywhere, especially in any shelter. And when we found that, that was with a point 
on the outside of the rock and I flipped this rock over which was about the top of the rock was two feet up underneath the dirt had tools all the way around the rock at different levels as you went down and then when I flipped the rock over it had an inch of dirt sticking underneath it that had two blades hidden underneath it and then right underneath that was this and this is a deer antler billet of course all that's been worn down in a way wasn't a heavily used billet but it was definitely used great piece this bone all here that's from the dirty hole it's just part of a leg bone you don't hardly find bone up there that much just because outside dirt doesn't let the stuff last it usually decays it away but this came from out of the clay so I'm guessing that the clay had it preserved for some how some reason a great tool though and then down here a couple of my best ones I have gave away and so many are always apt quick to call these nutting stones as we have another one right there you can see the divot on that side that one's much larger there's one over there but I believe and part of this one is missing but this was a multi-purpose tool used as a hammer stone and I believe a lot of these that we find especially hand sized ones that have these divots in them are more for the caps that go with a bow and drill friction fire starting kits this is what they would put on the top of their drill as they would work it with their bow to get a fire started after watching so many guys do it modernly it only makes sense that they did and archaeologists which they're not perfect but believe that uh, the bow and drill friction fire started about five six thousand years ago so that would end up just about right with coming from the Smetley culture there's another one we have here great big one and back here great big hole we have just a great piece and a bunch of other grinders and other little hammer stones laying back there preforms all kinds of tools can't forget all Candyland tools from Adelaide man some great pieces and we've made this pretty long which I have a couple flight knives from him as well I forgot to show it the other flight knives we don't want to make this too long I think we're at about 25 minutes already but it's hard to show all them tools in just under 10 minutes so keep on hunting keep on rescuing and we will tool at you later let's see some of your cool tools